Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. It's Crocon Keith here, and on today's video, we're looking at the top 10 Amiga CD32 games of all time. Let's take a look. So the CD32 was released in 1993 and uh, it was actually the world's first 32-bit console. I know there's, I think the FM Towns Marty might have come close. Maybe it wasn't the world's first, pretty sure it was, um, but it was a commercial failure. It was on sale for about a year or something like this. I remember being really excited about it. I was an A1200 owner and I seen this was coming out and I got it. So I was really happy back in the day. Uh, well, until I got it and realized there's actually no games for it. Every game that pretty much came out was a remake of a 12, A1200 game with CD quality sound. There's one or two differences you'll see in the top 10, but ultimately it was a commercial failure. It was just an Amiga 1200 with the keyboard taken away, the floppy disk taken away, and stuck into a console type of thing like this. But um, enough about that, let's take a look at the, the top 10 games. Okay, so starting things off at number 10, we have Deep Core. Captain Dawnraiser has been sent to save an underwater nuclear research base which has been invaded by aliens. When you're playing a character called Dawn Razor, you kind of know what you're getting yourself into with this game. What can I say? It's a really standard platformer, but it does everything correctly. Nine levels, bonus levels, weapon upgrades. It's a nicely done platformer that takes no real risks. There's no real difference between its regular Amiga counterpart, but still a great game for the CD32 nonetheless. At number 9 we have Universe. Universe is a 1994 point and click adventure from Core Design. You play a 16 year old Boris Verne who gets transported to another universe when messing about with a device in his uncle's living room. Sounds like a shit plot right? Well interestingly the plot came from an idea for a movie script believe it or not. The game itself is pretty standard point and click stuff but it was great fun to play and had excellent graphics. I originally played this on the Amiga 1200 so it was a joy to go from Lots of disc swapping to playing on a single CD. Another good thing, but was still annoying, was the fact you could save your game. CD32s are notorious for their lack of save game functionality, uh, due to only having one kilobyte of internal flash ROM, and very few games could use such a small amount. Universe could and allowed a single save point. Not great, but better than nothing. At number 8, Disposable Hero. When this was released on the Amiga in 93, it was ridiculously difficult. I struggled to get past the first level on easy. With the CD32 release, they toned the difficulty down to a more realistic level, and the game was so much better for it. Definitely one of the best Amiga shooters at the time. Gameplay is standard or type style shooter, except you have to land to make changes to your gun configuration. A bit annoying, but it worked okay. The graphics were fantastic for the time. I put a lot of the bigger shooters to shame. At number seven, Lamborghini American Challenge. This was actually a version of Crazy Cars 3, re-released and repackaged due to Crazy Cars 3 selling so poorly, which was due to their publishing house closing down apparently. It's a nice little racer for the CD32 and reminds me a bit of Chase HQ when the police get involved. As you win races you win cash which can be used to upgrade your car. Standard stuff these days but back then that was pretty new and pretty original. At number 6, Castles 2 Siege and Conquest. To reign 1311, the castle of King Charles of Britannia. I have grave news. King Charles is dead. 
Castles 2 Siege and Conquest was released on the Amiga in 1992 and put straight onto CD a year later for the CD32. It's exactly the same game as released on floppy disk, although the CD32 version does contain some really low res videos taken from the 1933 movie The Private Life of Henry VIII. It received average reviews at the time, but I personally like the game as it's set in a period of history that interests me, the Hundred Years' War, although it does you know, use a lot of poetic license in its version of history. Gameplay is pretty standard enough strategy style war game and you scout areas, conquer them, then build castles. Actually the castle building part was really really fun as you could design whatever castle you could dream up which was pretty unique in 1992. So there you go, we're at the halfway point now. You can see most of the games were remakes of Amiga games uh, with just very little token things like speech or or music but some of the, you know some of it was enjoyable I really enjoyed all those games and um, take a look at the others and see what you think at number five we have microcosm when gameplay of microcosm started appearing on video game TV shows in the 90s we were all floored by the graphics we'd never seen anything like this that initial wow factor disappeared very quickly when CD-ROM became the norm Amiga format magazine initially scored this at 87% but in the 1995 second review lowered that score to 40% laughing at the early review focusing only on graphics. Regardless, I still think it's a great game. It's a Space Harrier style on rail shooter with a well developed storyline that takes place inside the body of a corporate tech president. You fly through blood vessels, fighting microdrides, all that kind of stuff, it's really good fun. The CD32 version was one of the worst versions made but there was no other Amiga version available so regular Amiga owners were pretty envious. At number 4 we have got Heimdall 2. Heimdall 2 is an isometric action adventure set in Viking times and features lots of obscure puzzles that need solving. I loved playing this back in the day although I never finished it. I got completely stuck with one puzzle and never went back to it but it was great fun while it lasted. The CD32 version featured CD quality music but one other, ben one other benefit was using the CD32 controller. All the keys in the game were mapped perfectly on the controller and made the game much better to play than when I played it on the Amiga 1200. At number 3, the absolutely epic Liberation Captive 2. Guess what? The Fed's messed up real bad. They've spent millions on the new cop droids, and every so often they go haywire. Something to do with magnetic storms. So BioCore have been framing innocent people to cover it up. You know we gotta help them. And with enough evidence, we can go above the Feds to the Empire and shut them down for good. We'll have to break into the detention center and spring them. But they may not know anything. We gotta try. Liberation Captive 2 is probably the only game on this list that was designed with the CD32 in mind. It features long cutscenes, voice acting and a CD quality soundtrack. At the time, CD32 owners bragged about the Amiga 1200 never being able to process the graphics in Liberation. And then they ended up releasing it on the Amiga 1200 and the graphics were exactly the same. So the CD32 owners sank back into the reality that maybe they bought the wrong console. Anyway, music and sound effects suffered on the A1200, but it was essentially the same game. And what a game it was. Like It was one of the first open world and open ended role playing games I ever played. You were in control of four robots and your goal is to prove the innocence of a prisoner by using investigation and detective work. You can enter buildings, you can search for clues or interview people on the street. 
for its time, this was absolutely groundbreaking stuff. I loved playing it, but never really got that far. I was so mesmerized by the experience, I would just wander around for hours talking to people. I read somewhere that there were 4,000 missions in total. I, I guess somewhere out there someone is still trying to complete all 4,000. At number 2 we have Global Effect. Global Effect is a really really cool god game similar in style to Sin City but with a much broader scope. The goal of the game is to build a better world than we've achieved in real life, so the focus is on creating coal mines and power stations that are in balance with the environment. You literally win the game based on how many trees are growing. It's a slow game, but a pretty accurate world builder, and it taught young me a lot about economics back in the day. There's no real difference in the CD32 version apart from some better music. And my number one all-time best CD32 game ever is Simon the Sorcerer. So I had this on the Amiga 1200 and it was absolutely fine. It was really, really good fun. I got it again for the CD32 and man, it was just so much better. Why? The speech. On the Amiga, it was all text. On CD32, Simon was voiced by Chris Barry. He of Red Dwarf fame. Back in 1994, it was such a novelty for us to hear speech like this, and it made the game so much more enjoyable. My friends and family would watch me playing as though they were watching a show on TV. In fairness, it was that well written. Uh, I laughed so many times playing this. It was an, a joy, an absolute joy to play. It's a standard point-and-click adventure, in all fairness. It, it's no different to a lot you've played then. It was just a the storyline and the voice acting. Uh, it was set in a fantasy fairy tale world. You do the usual things, you know, get item A for person B, etc. But this was one of the best I'd played, right up there with the secret of Monkey Island, and therefore is my number one CD32 game of all time. <laughs> You interested in any priceless antique porcelain figurines? Not really. They're handcrafted by the ancient ones of Grail. No thanks. I've got lots of other priceless antiques. Anyone for a gold piece? Have you got any hint books for this game? So there you go, that's my top 10 CD32 games, uh, you probably won't agree, you probably will, you may not agree with the titles, you may agree, I don't know, hopefully it was interesting and maybe you'll go check out some of them or check out that really weird console, the Amiga CD32. Okay, I hope you enjoyed the video, please leave a like, please subscribe if you haven't and I'll see you on the next one. If you like that video and if you like what I do on the channel, please leave a like and please subscribe because it helps very much. Thank you.